I, I, I don't think the law is going to be the main weapon against rankism as, say, for example, in organizations. I think it's going to be more like what HR does. HR, has, which now has emerged in every organization, helps deal with, with problems of rankism. And in fact, the ombudsman at Princeton, when I finished my talk there, he came up and said, you have defined my job in one sentence. My job is distinguishing between rank and rankism. Every single case I get in this university involves distinguishing between the valid use of rank and the, the uh, valid use of rank and the abuse of rank. He makes that distinction over and over again all day long for almost every case presented to him. And then sorts it out. And a chronic abuser can come in for dismissal. And if the abuse takes any one of the well-defined forms of sexual harassment or punching or bullying, Bullying isn't quite there yet. Bullying isn't illegal in most places. Uh, I know of a labor union in Winnipeg, Manitoba, where they're adding a rankism-free environment to their demands that they make on management. They had already demanded a racism-free environment, and they've added a rankism-free environment to it. And that will raise consciousness about it and make their workplace a happier place, I think, and a more productive place. So it's in management's interest to do this. If all this was, was just, just urging people to be nicer, it wouldn't get anywhere. This is, this is pointing out to people that if they want their company to make more money, and to be more productive, and to be more creative, more hospitable to creativity and innovation, then they better get rid of the rankism in it, because that's repressing all these things.